Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Let's get right to it. All right, so got a pipe over here. Got a pipe over there. Just stuck some glass bottles on there because uh, they're going to be wound up with some resistance wire. Resistance wire, you're saying to me, Roy? Why would you resist anything? And it was about a year ago. I had a little space heater here, and it broke. Took it apart, and I found out that the resistance wire in there, same wire as right here, same wire that's in your hair blowers. This resistance wire had resistance. When you turn it on, it had the resistance until it heated up. And once it heated up, the resistance went away. And that's what we're going to be looking for here. Sort of a grounding system for Earth through resistance wire. We'll get into that later. So, moving along, guys. Uh, I want to show something a little quick here. I got a compass there. I'm just going to turn this. You can see the PMH is hooked up to each other. The two starts and two finish. But nothing else. They're not hooked up here. So just through a magnet to the iron we're seeing the pole swap. Okay. You can see it's a little ticking back. So basically we're changing the polarity in these in this PMH right now which Ed talks about in his magnetic current is that not cool going to be even cooler is on on the pipe the pipe just sitting on the ground right now okay um, I'm going to cut out a square under both of these and we're going to put a dielectric potential down there okay and that's going to come from the on Ed's picture, you'll see, you can't see it, but at Coral Castle, he has two of these round flanges. One's on the top and one's behind it, and you can't see the other one. <clears throat> so one would be a capacitor, and that capacitor is a, once you separate the charge, that capacitor becomes a um, possible high potential, but also becomes a uh, electrostatic. And that electrostatic is is 90 degrees off from electromagnetic so there goes how you create the electrostatic so when the electrostatic is going to go back through this resistance wire check me out through the resistance wire down to the ground to the dielectric that's going to be in the ground not touching the ground but close in proximity we're going to have a sleeve that goes around to the ground okay with a bunch of points coming out. And that's the outer sleeve. Then the inner sleeve from that outer sleeve will probably have a nice little gap and it will be the receiver for the bottom end of the coil that's going to go down this pipe. This pipe is going to have a coil similar to that but a little different because we're going to be looking to increase the voltage. So we're going to drive the voltage up and inside this pipe, there's going to be an array sitting on top of here before the bottle gets a hold of it. And that's going to be um, sort of like a flange. And then there's going to be a center um, core in this, in the middle of this, in the middle of that coil, which will slide down in here. 
So, and that core will come up a ways into the bottle and will actually probably come up to about here. And if you look on Ed's bottles, half of them are broken out and we'll break one out. We'll put a contact here, a sensitive contact. So on the top of that rod, there's gonna be a, a magnetic contact that's gonna contact and make contact there. And when that does, it'll open up the um, capacitor to discharge through the wire down um, into the core there. So it's filling up with energy in the casing, in the iron, and there's no loss here because the center core is also a, um, is attached at the um, top here, at the flange, actually at, at the bottom. It'll be attached at the bottom. So the core is up in the bottle, close to the top, and the flange around here will become a pole, the opposite pole of what that core is in that coil. So we're gonna have two poles real close right here. So we're gonna have a strong, strong magnetic field going on. Um, got me thinking there. But um, so that's what's going on in the bottle here. Um, you can see we have a switchy device there. If I want to use it, I could use it. You can also see when you start moving fast, the poles can't even keep up. And not to mention copper sleeve over the iron. But you can see that we have a nice smooth and you can see the needle's not even moving because the poles are changing so fast in here, the compass can't even keep up with it. Same thing happens with the, um, the signal right there. Cool stuff, man. Big time. Sitting back just looking at this thing, I'm like, man. This is coming together real quick, real soon. Real quick. Hey, Ven Ven. You liking it, Ven? What you got to say there, buds? You go play. Where's the man? Watch him. The bad one's out there. Go get him. They want to hurt the dad. Watch him. He's a prowler. Watch him, Ven. Go get him. Back to the bods. So you got ground pipe, ground pipe. You got a dielectric system in the bottom. And the dielectric system is similar to the dielectric up top because that's going to be a capacitor that's behind this bottle. But that bottle is the resistance wire and we need to have the bottle so we can contain the heat from the wire. And that resistance is going to be reacting to that bottom dielectric plate, which therefore is connecting everything that we're all standing on. So all the energy in this whole planet is in the ground the substance, the base is in the ground. And what we're going to do is every time this pole switches and switches over here, I got these out of phase. And you're saying to me, what? What are you talking about? That set of coils and that set of coils, the positive and negative, the positive, when it, see these are lined up, right? You see there's a line right there, bam. All right. So if this is positive, that's negative. If this is positive, that's negative. So these are going to be out of phase. So when one's hitting positive on that side and feeding, there's going to be a capacitor on this here next to the bottle and be a capacitor here next to the bottle. Now hear me out. Now the capacitor obviously is going to be like a dipole capacitor to where the, you have to have a plate of, of a charge. So if I have a plate of a charge that's up here and a plate of a charge that's down there, now the plate that's down there is going to be opposite of what this plate is and then it's going to flip and do its pole flip 
in the pipe. Go not as well in the pipe, but as well as the two capacitor plates on the top and bottom. The same thing over here, but out of phase. So when this bottom here is positive, this bottom here is negative. So there's going to be an automatic, and these are probably one, two, three feet apart. Maybe a little few inches more, but that's it. I didn't want them to react too much other than just regular ground electrostatic. So this becomes like a U shape over here. Okay, you guys got it? And the, and the inductive part is what's going to happen down here electrostatically, which is what the ground will give up energy out of itself. Mother Nature shows us in electrostatic. So when this side is banging positive, that side's banging negative. When that side's banging negative, that side's positive. That side's negative and that side's positive. So it's just like dipole. That's what I'm saying. You got to, it says you got to send it somewhere. We're sending it somewhere. We're going to send this son of a bitch from the ground. We're going to pull energy from the ground. And we're going to send this stuff up here. And this is the signal generator to it. And I'm going to get even more crazy with you guys. We're going to get into how the tripods are even working. And basically, I'm going to screw your mind up once I get all this set up. And you got to see the 100% conservation that's in that pipe and that pipe. On the energy that goes in that pipe will be the same energy that comes out of the opposite side of... Because what's going to happen is, just because these are magnetized, the wheel is going to turn to this on its own. The wheel is not going to have any, any, um, any lens law here. There's no lens law that's going to happen. But the wheel is going to be turning. As the wheel's turning, it's basically a signal generator at that point. But the interesting thing is with, when it comes in with the, the tripods, is that if you read deep into Ed's work and then you read into electrostatics, you'll see that the ground is all like a cloud coming over the ground. All that ground is having <coughs> the same charge on the ground. The same charge. So that's why I believe Ed was able to figure out how to put the charge in the whole area of the ground. And then with the tripod, he signaled out, is what I'm going to show you guys, is to blow your mind. Signal out from this, and I'll have a light bulb light up across the room from the, from the, the we'll call it the event. The, the single event. And every time this makes and breaks through this, there's going to be an event. And the event is going to be between the ground plate, the upper plate, the upper plate and the ground plate, as well as the antenna. A dipole antenna, which is the ground is going to be one pole, and the top of the tripod is the other pole. And that's where I got a lot of it here. We're going to experiment. We're going to take just regular rock, well, actually Ed's coral rock here, from, from his area, the same damn coral. That's from my area. That's coquina, a lot heavier. That's a lot lighter. Durable though, but it does have a lot of pockets in it. And that's where the the bi the the biologist part of me would love to be able to show how you can electromagnetize. Um, I'll call it organic material, because that's what that is. And when I go into my electrostatics and I start going into my material box here it's filled with organic materials except for I guess you could even call the the piece of plastics organic because you know why they're a dielectric but they're also from oil oil how organic is oil pretty damn organic it's not it's, it's not metallic there's your there's your your densest Material, I guess, not dense far as, as its density, but the permeability on that iron is just unreal. It's just unreal. And we can use it. That's why Ed shows a lot about that iron. Um, that's my old grounding pipe. Uh, it's too big. 
it's a shame I've paid a lot of money for it but maybe we'll utilize it in some other way but uh, leave your comments long live Edley Scallon peace out